On the phone, the blogger from the Uber blog, emptywheel.net, Marcy Wheeler. Hello, Marcy. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, now, uh, I, I assume most of our audience knows that if they ever want to know um, uh, about things like national security state and know on a, an incredibly granular level that they should be reading your blog. And you've expanded it, actually. Uh, you got some other uh, writers there, uh, uh, B. Maz, but others that you're adding that um, are fantastic on, uh, on other uh, topics as well. So I hope people are there. I wanted to get your um, uh, first impression from the, the, the Senate uh, CIA torture report. First off, let me just ask this, because I, I, I really don't know if there's anybody more knowledgeable about this stuff in the country. Was there anything in there that surprised you? Um, or that you didn't not, know? Let's put it that way. I mean, there were details I didn't know. And, and, and that's, I think, what the first impression of this is meant to be. When you hear them, when you see them describing the CIA anally feeding men for no medical reason, that's pretty shocking. They did that to five guys. Yeah. So it's stuff like that. I mean, it's stuff like, um, and there were details like I've long wanted to know what Jose Rodriguez deleted from his account of his briefing of Nancy Pelosi on torture. And we know it's that either she or Porter Goss said, hey, wait a second, this is illegal. So he deleted that and then destroyed the torture tape. So little details like that. But those are, as you said, really weedy. And most people don't need to know that level of detail. So 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 um, we we know that it was either a Nancy Pelosi or Porter Goss who had basically said to, to Rodriguez. And this again, uh, this is a guy who is who's now who has not been fired from the CIA, uh, but he, is, he has been promoted uh, since this episode, told that this uh, program was illegal, and then he went off and uh, destroyed the tapes. What, what, yeah, what they, what they basically said is, in other countries, this is going to be illegal in other countries, but they raised questions of law about the conduct that CIA said it was going to use in the future. They had already used it in Abu Zubaydah, and originally that was included in the summary of their briefing of Pelosi and Goss, and then they decided that maybe they should take it out. And Rodriguez said, short but sweet, took that out. Wow. Um, all right. So let me let me let me also start with this. Isn't it, it seems to me, I mean, the, the 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 mandate of the report was to look only at the CIA actions, right? There seems to me to be some stuff that I have trouble reconciling, and you can help explain it to me. One is, is that on one hand, the report claims that the CIA was lying to uh, policymakers. Does the report say that it was lying to the Bush administration? Because it, it, it seems to me at one point, I can't remember exactly where it is, but um, uh, that uh, I think it was uh, somebody got a call at the uh, national security. I guess it was Bybee got a call from uh, folks at the CIA uh, in 2003 after Bush gave a speech saying, hey, we don't torture, we would never do that. And uh, the CIA called the National Security uh, Office and said, um, hey, what's going on here? Uh, are we being left out to hang out to dry? I mean, isn't that indication that uh, the administration knew what was going on? Yeah, and that incident, actually, it refers to a 2003 speech and, and actually had been reported in the Washington Post, uh, I think, in 2008. Um, there were a couple of times where the CIA demanded and got more cover from the White House. That point in, two, in June 2003, after President Bush in a speech that day, we don't, we, not only did he say we don't torture, but we, he also said we bring those who torture to prosecution. And that's when the CIA started freaking out. It was, it was uh, John then, Rizzo, who was the CIA's deputy general counsel, who called John Bellinger, uh, the legal advisor to the National Security Council, to, mm -hmm. to say, hey, are we in trouble here? Right. And, and, uh, and, 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 but then what happened? Uh, in uh, on July 29th, 2003, so about a month later, the CIA briefed Bellinger and a bunch of other people, not Bush, but uh, Vice President Cheney was there, and said, "Here's all the great things we've gotten from torture, including um, you know all of these all of these terrorist plots. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed helped us uh, break, and that's 
the gist of a lot of the lies the CIA told both to Congress and to uh, the White House. They said, we got X, Y, and Z from torture. And what the report does is trace through and go, no, actually that came from the foreign government that was holding Majid Khan or uh, al-Nashiri or who, whatever before he got turned over to the CIA that elicited that information. Or that was the FBI that was interrogating Abu Zubaydah before the CIA kicked them out. So the, it's it's details like that where the CIA, you know, they're basically the, the cheat in high school who is claiming credit for passing the test when they were looking over your shoulder the entire time. That's sort of what the CIA was doing with their torture program. Only people were being subjected to brutal, brutal, uh, brutal interrogation in the process. There are another series of lies. I mean, the, the CIA lied about who they briefed when the CIA lied to DOJ about what the torture they had either already done or were going to do constituted, um, the, the CIA tried to, and this one actually doesn't show up in the uh, report as much as it should. It probably is in the uh, classified section. But the, but the CIA, having done a bunch of things that were not approved by DOJ, basically went to John Yu and got him to, at, to, to freelance his own mini opinion so that they could claim to have authority to basically stick people in freezing water, which they love to do and got somebody killed in Afghanistan. And... Um, and, and that's the kind of stuff CIA was pulling along the way. Um, so, yeah, they lied to everyone. And, and I think it is um, the, the biggest or one of the big problems with the report is that, and, uh, and Mark Udall just got off the floor of the Senate basically making this case. Um, President Obama protected the office of the presidency and his predecessors to a great extent. And I argue that one reason he did so is because he is relying and has been relying on precisely the same presidential authorization for his drone strikes that Bush relied on for torture. This is and the gloves come to... off memorandum of notification. Yeah. Um, so going back to September 17, 2001, for for whatever reason, Obama didn't decide to start fresh with the war on terror. He just used uh, Bush's, you know, broad authorization for the CIA to engage in a bunch of stuff, including torture and drone strikes. And if Obama sets the precedent, the presidents can have their their actions, the actions that they authorized, investigated. Then, you know, President Ted Cruz can do it to him after he's done, right? right? So he's not going to do that. And so the CIA withheld 9,000 documents from the Senate, uh, basically citing White House equities without, no one forced the White House to, to invoke executive privilege, which Dianne Feinstein could have and probably should have done, um, to make it clear that this is about Obama's cover up. But as a result of that, I mean, I can point to some places in this report where I know David Addington is or where I know Dick Cheney is. Um, there's a number of places like that, and I'm only halfway through my close reading of it. And and that's that's a legitimate problem, because all of these people who were ordered by Dick Cheney to go torture um, have been stuck out there. And Dick Cheney is not out there with them, which is why Cheney is taking to the TV and saying lots of nice stuff, because he realizes you know, if if they don't get some protection, they're going to come after him and say, well, Dick Cheney made us do it all, and then the whole thing will start to collapse. But that's that's one of the problems is President Obama is protecting President Bush and, and, and to a much greater extent, uh, Vice President Cheney. And because of that, there are these gaping holes where Dick Cheney should be. And 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 when when we talk about the the CIA coming back and lying about the efficacy of their work, is that um, are, are they and and I don't know if there's anything in the report that would indicate that, but let me get your sense. Are they doing that because um, uh, Cheney is basically saying, like, look, when you guys come and report to us, I want to hear good things? Um, partly. And there are moments in the report where CIA officers, CIA's managers are saying, you know, unless we make this look good, then we're going to lose a budget. We're going to lose our budget. So, you know, there's some of that kind of institution. Not, not we're going to go to jail. Uh, we're going to lose our budget. Right, exactly. But but um, I did a post before the report came out the other day, and, and, I, and I, think the, I think it still holds. 
The Senate Armed Services Committee report, which uh, Carl Levin released in 2009, and which, by the way, was not redacted anywhere near as heavily as this CIA report, which, you know, so the secrecy is getting worse Mm -hmm. under the most transparent administration ever. Um, But in that report, it makes it clear that uh, it was not just CIA. It was also DOD that was asking for this. But these agencies that were working with Dick Cheney to institute a torture program, they weren't looking for interrogation per se. They were looking for what's called exploitation, which is a term of art that includes, that does include interrogation, but it also includes getting people to turn, to, to spy for you. Um, as we know, a number of people who were put through the torture programs, both DODs and CIAs did do, and also to create propaganda. And so one question that I think more people should be asking, because we know it happened. I mean, so we sent even Sheikh al Libby, um, a Libyan, who we captured in Afghanistan, we sent him to be tortured uh, at our behest in Egypt by Omar Suleiman, who was a close intelligence partner of us. And under torture, even Sheikh al Libby said, Al-Qaeda and Iraq have ties. They, they work on chemical weapons together. And that's what was used to get us into Iraq. Right. That tortured lie. And there are a number of other tortured lies. You know, we know, for example, that oh, that uh, President, the Vice President, whoever he is, Vice President Cheney, was uh, was planning on, w- wanted to waterboard this uh, Iraqi intelligence guy that he thought would be able to claim Weapons that Iraq and, and Al-Qaeda had ties. So, so, you know, there is very good reason, and you're going to have Johnson Landy on, I think, right? Mm-hmm. You, no, 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 that's Scott. Um, but I mean, I think there's 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 very good reason to believe that some of this was about getting the stories that Dick Cheney wanted. And it may be that he believed it or it may be that he felt like he needed some causes of ally to go into Iraq. Um, another thing that we know some of these same detainees were were uh, asked to do was claim that Osama bin Laden had nukes when they knew that wasn't true either. Um, and then they recanted. And so those themes, the ties between Iraq and al-Qaeda and that Osama bin Laden had nukes or some other kind of, there's there's an extended anecdote about Khalid Sheikh Mohammed claiming these people uh, had an anthrax program. Um, and so those things, I think, raise a real question and should get people, you know, when when Dick Cheney says this program was effective, Somebody on TV needs to turn to them and say, you mean it was effective in getting us into Iraq for no reason. Right. Because I mean, that that's... is what it was effective in doing. And that's what that's what, frankly, all of the torture programs that we reverse engineered to use as our torture program were designed to do. They were designed for propaganda. They weren't designed for getting intelligence. Let, let me just make this clear to people is that it is widely known that you cannot get good intel information generally, generally from torture and that really torture is about getting false confessions. Right. That's why you see it in uh, in, you know, uh, in in in. in dictatorial regimes and where you want the kangaroo courts. And in this instance, um, it, it, it's sort of a fascinating hybrid, isn't it? Because uh, we get this information so that we can then put it into, we're basically laundering false information on some level uh, by torturing people so that we can get it into the mainstream. It's, it's no different in some ways than uh, Dick Cheney making sure that Judith Miller is leaked something and then goes and cites Judith Miller on, uh, on Meet the Press. It's all part of that larger picture. And another thing that this report shows is that they, the CIA was going to the New York Times again, and getting them to say, oh, the program was really effective and here's the stuff we got from Abu Zubaydah. But we know that, in fact, what we were getting from Abu Zubaydah um, was instead the scare that let the government uh, kind of ramp up these counterterrorism uh, policies. And I, you know, and I, I want to be really cautious here. Like, I don't know what what's inside Dick Cheney's head, and I'm, I'm kind of right. scared to go there. Um I, and I and I suspect there are a lot of people in the middle that just simply believed that Al Qaeda and Iraq had some tie, or that just simply believed that the scariest thing was a new, you know uh, Osama bin Laden with a nuclear bomb, and therefore they kept asking about it. And so it kind of was a self-reinforcing bubble, and, and that's part of the problem with bubbles. And then there are people, you know, the people who decided they were going to anally feed these men, they're just plain sick. They're sick. Crazy. Sick. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, right. And I think that's what happens to torturers is they, 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 you know, and there are a number of people who've been involved in the interrogation program who in the last couple of days have said, you know, torture is as much as about what it does to the torturer as it is uh, to the, the tortured person. I think Mahar Arar, who we sent to be tortured by uh, Bashar al-Assad, said that. In right. The, in this the is a Canadian uh, citizen. Is that right? And, 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 yep. and, and, and so, uh, you know, on some level, the the story, at least concurrently, back in you know the in in o three o four o five o six o seven uh, that we were talking about was basically the uh, the administration, and then you know it filtering down was just basically like well, as you call it, it's the gloves come off uh, a memorandum that basically says. We're, you do what you got to do. You just get me X, Y, or Z. Uh, and and that's, that desire for X, Y, or Z, uh, I guess what we're saying is we don't really know what that desire was founded. Like, get me lies that will get me into Iraq or get me what I think is the truth that will get me into Iraq. But let's do it, you know, do it any way you can, which, of course, increases the odds that it's going to come there because— you know, is uh, you you can torture people into giving you the information you want. I guess at that point. So what? What? So what happens from here? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, honestly, here's the other thing that's going on. Is you know, I I I commend Diane Feinstein for getting this report out. I really do, and I commend her staffers all the more so because they went through hell to make this happen. Um. But one of the problems, and one of the problems I have with this report, and one of the one of the areas where I'm actually sympathetic with the torturers, is that um, this this report should be taken as a lesson in the failures of our oversight of CIA. It should be taken. I mean, that should be the the primary lesson we take away because it's not just torture this is true of it's true of the drone strikes it's true of you know there was that report recently that showed that that uh when cia pays rebels to fight its wars for them it almost always failed it failed in libya i think most of the people who supported the libya intervention now now are just appalled at what has happened it is failing in syria and so and and again that's largely the same structure and we keep failing. We keep making colossal mistakes in what are called covert ops. And it keeps getting America sucked deeper and deeper into this morass, both of, of moral failure, but also just danger in the Middle East. And, and, and that's the lesson needs to be stop. The lesson needs to be all of these programs. It's not, you know, like the Republicans want it to be a, we should be torturing rather than drone striking. And the Democrats want it to be we should be drone striking rather than torturing. But the answer should be we need to find other solutions because both torture and drone strikes have failed. I mean, so in a perfect world, do we just we shut down the CIA or is it that um, the uh, the 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 real people who need to read this report are the 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 Senate Intelligence and the House Intelligence Committees, and they need to say like, oh, this is this is more than anything else. This is our failure. This is why we ex- the fact that we exist is sort of uh, a proof that um, there's a problem, and there's always sort of an inherent problem with the, a place like the, you know an entity like the CIA and, and perhaps any other people come in and this really is a condemnation of us well it's not entirely i mean i don't want to let congress off too easily and i think that uh you know one of the problems with drones that's even worse than with torture both are really driven by contractors but general dynamics is giving fund, you know, is giving campaign funds to most of the people in the intelligence committee. So that makes it harder to stop because, you know, Mitchell and Justin, as far as we know, weren't also, you know, dumping a lot of money back into the, um, into the, the intelligence committee. They were, but, um, they, they you, were? Uh, no, no, I'm asking. I, 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 did you say oh, they Oh, no, we they don't know that okay. they are. And let so me just tell people... Whereas we know that General Dynamics pays a ton of money into politics. Let me just tell people who they are. Those are two individuals who set up a company basically to consult with the, the CIA on how to sort of set up these torture programs. They were supposed to get $180 million. When their contract was canceled, they only gotten 80 of it. But that, that in and of itself is just... Uh, it's just shocking. I mean... Uh, and we're still paying. I mean, you know, they've got an indemnification contract, which 
I don't blame them for, but, you know, we paid a million dollars after they were done contracting for us, and we paid them $500,000 for counter surveillance. We paid them like a uh, hundred million, I mean, we paid them a million dollars for legal services, a chunk of which was for when they testified before Senator Levin's committee back in 2008. So, um, yeah, we're still paying them. Unbelievable. We're going to, we're going to, I think that the contract goes through like 2022 or something like that. So, so what's the best that's going to come out of this? Uh, if anything, I know you got to go and, and uh, you got another uh, interview to do, but what, what's the best? I mean, where, where, how do we, how do we sum this up at this point anyways? You know, I just think people need to start demanding that the CIA, to the extent that it still exists, engages in humans engages in information collection and not these grand paramilitary torture contract driven other plans because they're not built for it. They don't have the management structure for it. They're not good at it. There's not enough oversight for it. And it tends to really backfire. And do you think Brennan uh, would make those changes or no? (laughs) No. Mark, you all just called for his resignation, but that's not going to happen either. Marcy Wheeler, uh, empty, uh, emptywheel.net. Uh, folks should check it out. Um, uh, I suspect uh, we're going to want to talk to you uh, more about this in, in the coming uh, weeks. But uh, thank you so much for your time.